Hello everyone and welcome. Charles Johnson, lead trainer and technical engineer at LinkSpring. And uh, today we're going to be doing a re-record of the uh, loop point video. Uh, reason being is there is a comment uh, that was just uh, just created uh, a few uh, hours ago uh, and uh, cited some uh, misinformation in the video, which after listening to the video, uh, realized that they were correct and uh, I didn't uh, give you the correct information. So I'm here to change that. And I do apologize. Um, sometimes we are human uh, and mistakes happen. And it's interesting because what he is saying is I that's actually how I explain it in class. So I'm not sure why I didn't explain it here uh, in the uh, video correctly. But I do want to make that right. I'm a firm believer of uh, admitting those mistakes. And when those mistakes happen, they need to get corrected. So uh, thank you, Keith, uh, for the comment uh, and listening to the video uh, fully. Uh, and uh, we will make sure it, it, uh, it is correct uh, here. So uh, we're going to talk about the loop point. Uh, with the loop point here, uh, it is effectively uh, what we use to uh, either A, control other modulating outputs, uh, such as valves, dampers, uh, VFDs, etc. Or we can actually use it to uh, stage uh, digital equipment. So if you have multiple compressors or multiple boilers, we can actually use a loop uh, and, uh, and uh, control those digital outputs based upon that uh, as well. And you can use, and that can be done in several ways. Uh, but the way I, I see a loop point here uh, is uh, effectively um, cruise control in a vehicle. So you're driving on a highway uh, and you want to maintain a speed. And uh, because you are going, uh, you're going to be on that highway for a little while, uh, you want to go ahead and make sure that you take your foot off the gas, but you want the car to maintain the speed. So we're going to set the cruise control so the car will accelerate and decelerate to maintain uh, that set speed. So effectively, that's what we do here with a loop point. And we have uh, a few properties. Uh, the first one is the loop enable. Uh, and so typically, this is going to be uh, some kind of status, but could be another way to enable or disable the loop. And effectively, if the loop is disabled, we have several options uh, to control uh, our uh, output. We can actually either go to max value, min value, uh, we can hold whatever current value we currently have, uh, or we can go to zero, which is what I actually do. And to change that, if I double click on the uh, loop point here, uh, we have this uh, disable action, as you can see. And if I hit the drop down arrow, uh, you can see uh, the different min value, max value hold. But again, zero is what we typically keep it. Now, uh, the control variable, this is your modulating input, whether it's the temperature, flow, pressure, etc. Uh, it's something that is continuously changing. And the set point uh, is what we're actually trying to control our control variable to. Now, as far as loop action goes, uh, direct or reverse. Um, whatever, the, uh, whatever the input is doing or the control variable is doing, if we want our output to... Uh, act uh, in the same manner. So if our input is increasing, we want our output to increase, that would be a direct uh, loop point. But if our if we have a rise uh, on our input and we want our uh, output to do the opposite, that would be a reverse acting loop. So for example, uh, here is a direct acting loop because I'm maintaining a chill water valve. But on a hot water valve, I'm typically going to make this a reverse acting loop. Then we have the proportional, integral, uh, and derivative constants. And I just have the D out here, but typically we're going to maintain just the proportional and integral. Um, but PID stands for proportional, integral, and derivative. And really, the only time I've ever used derivative is to um, control, like, cascading. If I'm cascading boilers, uh, I may use uh, a derivative because um, it actually works against the... Um, it's actually supposed to work against the integral uh, there, but it's typically p plus i plus d uh, is what they is what they normally say. Uh, then we have uh, bias. Uh, bias is uh, what we want to do when our set point, uh, when our control variable and our set point match. Now this does come from the old school uh, uh, old school method of pneumatic control. 
uh, where we're controlling multiple outputs um, from uh, one pneumatic, sig uh, pneumatic signal. Uh, so, um, but typically, again, this is what we're going to be. So right now, uh, the old days, we would have kept this at 50%, I mean at 50, so if we were to match, then I would go to 50%. Uh, but normally now, we just keep it at zero. But if you wanted to change the bias, you certainly could. Uh, then we can change the min and max outputs here uh, from 0 to 100, and then the ramp time. Now, ramp time only applies uh, when we are when the loop is first enabled. After the first time the loop is enabled, once that time is expired, uh, the ramp time no longer applies. So basically, this, can, uh, this works as a rate limiter uh, when the loop is first enabled. Uh, but out of that, uh, out of that timer, uh, it no longer, uh, it will no longer apply. And I thought I said that in my video before, uh, but uh, apparently I left that part out. So uh, again, uh, this is uh, more of just explaining uh, things, what we, uh, explaining some things better than I did before. Uh, the proportional constant. This is what we call a throttling range. Um, depending upon uh, what uh, what type of loop we have, uh, whether or not this is in Niagara or another um, uh, another product such as Distic or whatnot, they actually work in the opposite manner. Um, so this proportional, basically, if you divide it by 100, it would actually then be 5. Um, uh, but the way that I like to explain the proportional constant here is for every, uh, for every, um, the difference between here, it gets, we multiply it by the proportional value. And so if my, uh, if my set point or if my uh, supply temp is 56 degrees and my set point is 55, and if I were to enable uh, my loop here, then my output is going to be 20. And so if I were to uh, increase this to, let's say, um, 30, uh, it should go 30. And of course, then if I go lower, it will go lower. So the way that I uh, that I think the proportional constant here is because it's a throttling range and it can be larger, especially for like supply temps. Uh, so if you need something to act a little more quickly, uh, I usually use a larger proportional constant. If I want something to act more slowly, uh, I uh, use uh, a smaller proportional constant. So like for supply temps and whatnot, I will start with. Um, uh, I will start with uh, like 20 or maybe even 25, but people can, you know, set it significantly lower. Uh, but I normally do for like space temps or something like that, that I don't want to change continue or change so quickly. Uh, I will set it uh, to be lower. Now you could set the set this to lower. And as long as you change your inter, your um, integral constant as well, um, you know, tuning PID loops uh, is uh, is an art form. So you know, you can you can play with this uh, as much as you want and find out uh, for yourself what this uh, what this will actually do. But as you can see here, without an integral, uh, this is what we uh, are maintaining the twenty percent. Now, uh, if I were to uh, add the integral constant, and this is actually repeats per minute. Uh, and so, if I use a lower number, then we're going to have a lower number per minute. And so if I set this typically to like, let's say 0.5, ooh, then uh, at 0.5, uh, basically we're going to be doing half a repeat per minute. So effectively it's going to be a full repeat of a full 20% after two minutes. So uh, the lower the integral, uh, the, uh, the smaller the increase that we have. And so now if I actually go uh, to, uh, let's say I set this to two instead, uh, we can see that actually, um, it's actually, uh, working faster, uh, for the loop. So if you need it to catch up, uh, put a higher, uh, integral constant, uh, versus a lower integral constant. So if I'll go ahead and set this to, let's say, uh, 0.25 here. So it's going to be a quarter of a repeat per minute. So effectively after four minutes is when it would go, uh, like the full, uh, the full proportional. Now, as far as derivative, um, uh, very few times where I do this, some people will use it to maintain uh, static pressure. Um, I've never had to do that. Uh, the only time I've ever uh, used a derivative, again, which counteracts the integral, 
um, is uh, for uh, like cascading boilers. So um, there are some other uh, there are there could be some other scenarios there, but uh, I've only maybe used derivative, uh, you know, derivative, you know, like three times in my career. So uh, you know, just you know that normally this is probably not used in uh, HVAC applications, at least for what we do. Uh, it can stay mostly ignored. Now, as far as bias goes, bias was very popular uh, way back in the day, uh, especially for the old days of pneumatics. And I'm talking about this with uh, about what Keith was saying, because it's actually what I used to, um, it's actually how I explain it in class. And so I'm not sure why I didn't explain it uh, the exact same way, uh, but I'm going to here. So, you know, coming from the old days of, uh, of pneumatics where we were controlling uh, multiple uh, outputs from uh, one signal, uh, the bias would have been there to work uh, in the same manner. And so, uh, you know, if we were, uh, you know, going from um, heating uh, to, uh, you know, heating to cooling, we would have uh, a, a specific um, PSI where we weren't really doing much of anything, and that's what the bias would have been there for. But as a uh, but as an actual explanation, uh, whatever the set point, uh, when the set point and the um, uh, and the control variable are the same, uh, that is what we are going to want our uh, output to be. And so, if I go ahead and set this back to zero, and I now set my bias to fifty. We can see now that it actually adds uh, to uh, it actually adds to our overall uh, output here, and so uh, if I were to override this to fifty-five, we can see now that because we are equal, it is adding that bias to there. Uh, now, do we use this in a lot of modern applications today? No. Um, but we do teach it, uh, or we do talk about it uh, in the N4 class, and so therefore, just kind of want to show you what that what that uh, does. But factually, that is correct. Whatever, uh, when these are equal, uh, the bias uh, it, uh, the bias is uh, is uh, fifty percent. But it this will add fifty. This will add uh, up to our max value uh, that we need. So some people may use that. Uh, when they're trying to tune a loop or they can't really tune a loop. So they're going to use the bias to kind of help get there uh, faster. Uh, now, uh, as far as ramp time goes, this is uh, this only applies when we are first enabling the loop. And so it kind of acts as a rate limiter to make sure that we don't go off the rails. Uh, so even if we need to be at 100%, it's not going to. Um, uh, it will It will go ahead and start to slowly um, uh, slowly uh, increase to your max value uh, to allow, um, uh, to make sure that we don't hunt right away. Because obviously when we start up a unit, um, you know, the temperature may be higher or lower than normal. And because of that, you know, the loop can really kind of get out of whack. And so if I were to, uh, let's go ahead and disable the loop and set the bias to zero. And let's disable the loop. And we'll put it back to auto. And now if I were to set this to three minutes here. So if I were if I were out of uh, out of whack here, which I'm going to be doing here, um, and I'm let's say I'll set to like 70 degrees. So realistically uh, we would be well above 100%, or it, it should go to 100% quickly. But uh, the ramp time will actually help uh, act as a rate limiter uh, when we are first enabled, and then after that, we will go, uh, you know, it will be uh, ignored. There'll be, there's like a timer expired in there, and so it will, uh, it will ignore it after, uh, the time, after that time has elapsed. And so if I go ahead just to, let's say, override this to 100 degrees, Right, so more than more than likely, we would be at 100% immediately. But now, if I were to enable the loop, now we can see it's going to go from zero to 100 across a three-minute span. So 
whatever whatever that time would be. So you know, you take a hundred and divide it by, um, you know, uh, you divide that by uh, across the three minutes, and you'll get that X percent uh, there. But you can see here that we are um, that it is working, but it is limiting it. So if we had set this to zero, this would just go to a hundred immediately. Uh, so I hope uh, that is a better explanation of the loop point. Uh, and I hope that Keith takes a listen again uh, to make sure uh, that he is satisfied uh, with this video. And again, thank you, Keith, for pointing out uh, some of the inaccuracies that I had uh, in the video. And I wanted to make that correct. So until next time, have a great one.